to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, October 28th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Barack Obama says he didn't know anything about the spying on global leaders by the NSA. Does ignorance of the law only include the president? Plus, the war on journalists is in full swing. We revisit the casualties. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, Dick Cheney just said, they don't fear us, they don't trust us. That's right. The world community has contempt for the American government, just like many American citizens because of their Ill illegal activities and their violations of privacy. And a story from the London Guardian today says Spain summons a U.S. ambassador over a claim that NSA tracked 60 million calls a month. The Spanish prime minister has summoned the U.S. ambassador to explain the latest revelations to emerge from the files leaked by Snowden, which suggest the NSA tracked more than 60 million phone calls in just the space of a month. So first we've seen this happening in Germany, then in Mexico, then in Brazil, then we found out they tracked 70,000 French calls in just one month, and now it's Spain. Another day, another country is annoyed with us, angry with us. We see also that there was surveillance of Angela Merkel, and that ex surveillance extended all the way back to 2002 when she was an opposition candidate, as well as 34 other world leaders. In a report from CNN, they say the White House stopped the phone tapping of foreign leaders this summer, and they say that Obama didn't know. Now, the C CNN is actually reporting on a Wall Street Journal story. They say the Wall Street Journal reported that the White House ordered a halt to eavesdropping. Notice that, eavesdropping. They don't want to call it spying. That's just the kind of linguistic prevarication we expect from the government and from their spokespersons at CNN. It's to the point where incompetence has become an alibi, if not a virtue, when we see the government doing this. And yet we are supposed to feel better that they don't have any oversight. There's supposed to be oversight of a search warrant by a judge. But then we were told, don't worry about that. We've got all kinds of controls internal within the, uh, the NSA as well as FISA. We're looking at all of this. There's a lot of oversight. It turns out that there isn't any oversight. Nobody's looking at this. The president's not looking at it. And he says he doesn't know what's going on with it any more than he knows what's going on with the health care website. The Constitution specifies that we get a judge, that they're specific about who and what they're looking for, but we see in this article that they don't really know, according to the Wall Street Journal, when he gave the shutdown order or who gave the shutdown order. Just that, oh yeah, we've taken care of that already. Now that you know about it, we'll kind of walk this back and say that it's been taken care of. But we see reports from the foreign press that Barack Obama, this is in the Telegraph, approved tapping Angela Merkel's phone three years ago. That's right, in 2010. He did know about it. This is according to Der Spiegel, as well as other sources in Germany. It says the president allegedly allowed U.S. intelligence to listen to calls from the German chancellor's mobile phone after he was briefed on the operation by Keith Alexander, director of the NSA in 2010. So now again, we have more lies from the Obama administration as well as the NSA giving us the least untruthful version of this. Now Republicans have rushed to his defense. You've got Mike Rogers, Marco Rubio, and Peter King. This is what Peter King says. He says the president should stop apologizing, stop being defensive. No, the president and neocons like Peter King should stop violating the constitution, stop violating people's privacy and obey the law. We see a very different reaction from Obama when it comes to people exposing his criminal activity, whistleblowers and journalists. And here to join us and talk about that is Leanne McAdoo. So Leanne, he doesn't uh, think it's any big deal when he spies on people abroad as citizens as well as government leaders, yet he has a very different attitude when that happens domestically, doesn't he? Absolutely. I mean, his administration goes out of their way to avoid scrutiny from journalists and reporters. Uh, they, they really only want everyone to look at the propaganda videos that they put out. And they have a very overreaching reaction when somebody blows a whistle on them or when a journalist points out something. Exactly. Obama came into office pledging to be the most open and transparent government ever, but he's actually being seen as the least transparent president we've ever had. And he's also very aggressive when he goes uh, to prosecute whistleblowers. He's there have been six government employees since 2009, plus two uh, contractors, including Edward Snowden, who have been prosecuted under the Espionage Act, 
which prior to that, it has happened three times. And that's going all the way back to 1917. Exactly. So in just a couple of years, four years or so, he's prosecuted six people when they just had three uh, from all the presidents since 1917. So he's aggressively using this and expanding it. That's what we see with Obama. He's doing everything bad that we've seen both Republican and Democrat presidential, uh, uh, not candidates, but presidents do, and yet he's taking it to all new extremes. Right, and I, and this this authoritarianism it sort of reaches into the agencies that are under underneath him. The DHS we just saw they went and raided under false pretenses uh, an investigative award-winning investigative journalist Audrey Hudson, and they they said, oh, we're going to go in and we have a warrant to get unregistered firearms. Well, they didn't find any of those, but what they did do is go into her office, and out of all the stacks and stacks of paperwork that she has there, they found five documents that related to uh, some stories that were critical of the federal air marshals mm -hmm. and that, that program. And she had won some awards for the, the, the stories that she had done on that. And so they went in and confiscated her private personal notes and documents for those particular stories and remove them from her office. And we see them coming after Fox journalists as well. I mean, it's just a full spectrum, and yet we see, just as I mentioned before the break, that it's not just Obama, but he's got Republican apologists for him. He's got uh, Mike Rogers, he's got Peter King, Marco Rubio is saying, don't worry, there's nothing at all about this that, that we should be concerned about. Everybody does it. And that's true in Washington. Mm -hmm. that's, that's true, I'm sure it's maybe true of the French. They've probably got their own spying program, the Germans as well. But to the extent that the Americans are capable of doing it, that's the real story. Nobody has the kind of technology that we have, and that's what makes this so pervasive and so pernicious, is the kind of technology that we have. Everybody across the world is crying out and saying, something needs to be done to rein in this. And, and of course, there should be something done to rein in the other countries as well, but it's the pervasive lack of uh, attention paid to the rule of law, to mm -hmm. citizens' privacies, to the Constitution that everybody's concerned about. But the Republicans don't want to stop it because they see themselves as having that kind of power once they get office. So they don't want to take right. that away from the president now because they want it when they become president. Right, exactly. Power. Each president sort of learns from the previous administration how to kind of go about curtailing the press. And there, there are no checks and balances right now of power. It's a complete affront to democracy the way that we do it here. And what their administration does, basically they take videos of their own press, their meetings, and then they allow that to be used by journalists. They say, well, if you have any questions, why don't you go to the whitehouse.gov website where you'll find <laughs> all of our videos and content oh, yeah. on that subject matter. Right. So it's, it's whatever propaganda they create. In fact, Obama doesn't even have his press meetings or anything on his public schedule. So reporters don't even know who he's going to be meeting with. So therefore, they can't even ask him any questions about it. And then they don't learn until after the fact. So the Obama White House produces its own short newscast called the West Wing Week, which is basically five minutes of their own video and sound from the events that the press didn't even get to attend. And then there, everyone in America can find out what happened in the government that week. Exactly. Uh, just <laughs> like we find out from the NSA propaganda film. Thank you, Leanne. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's right. It's just like the NSA propaganda video on YouTube. Now, typically, they get about two or 300 views on YouTube. This NSA propaganda video got over 130,000 votes, and about 10% of those, about 12,500 of those were down votes. That's a new record for YouTube, as Anthony Gucciardi pointed out this weekend. Nobody is buying it. Nobody is believing this. People are very angry, just like the people who were protesting this weekend at the Stop Spying on Us rallies in Washington, as well as thousands of people in other capitals like Berlin. People are very upset worldwide with what the NSA is doing, and they're simply not buying the story from the NSA that this is not spying. It is spying. It is breaking the law. It is violating people's privacy, and we're sick of it. Well, stick around right after the break. We're going to have more news about privacy violations as well as updates on Fukushima. Why is nascent iodine so important? 
Basin iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down, and it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine. And the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS, with women, fibrocystic breast disease, because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine, atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals, it's vegan-friendly, it's gluten-free, it's GMO-free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing. So we developed with Dr. Group a double-strength, low-price, InfoWarsLife.com, Survival Shield, the atomic nascent iodine available right now. Well, welcome back. Now, not satisfied with dragnet collection of our data on cell phones and the internet, now we learn that the feds are openly admitting that they're planning black box vehicle mandates to track, tax, and even remotely control all personal vehicles. This is from Mike Adams at Natural News. We covered this on InfoWars today. He makes three very important points. He said the government wants to track your every move. In other words, they want to decrease your privacy. Then he says governments can turn every road into a toll road. In other words, they're going to increase the taxes that you pay. And the third point he makes is that two-way communication allows government to control your vehicle. In other words, they're going to get physical control over you. Now, this is very pernicious because unlike the current tax, the road use tax that we have now, a tax on fuel, this is something that's not going to be anonymous. It's kind of like the analogy between a sales tax that is anonymous and an income tax where they have to know everything about you in order to collect it. That has a lot of people very concerned about the privacy implications of this. We've talked about this in the past. In April 2012, Paul Joseph Watson had a story talking about the implications of MAP 21. But main thing here, too, is also notice that this is a very deceptive agenda. This is something they've been hiding for quite some time. First of all, notice that they have a list of cars that going back by make and year, we see that these EDR black boxes were put in in the 90s and mid 90s and late 90s. It's primarily some American car companies at GM and others. Then in 2011, we start seeing all of the car companies starting to add these boxes to it. Now 96% of them have it. At that time, in 2011, the Fed started requiring a standardized protocols and anybody that had installed these black boxes in their cars, the manufacturers who had installed them. And then subsequent to that, as part of MAP 21 in 2012, and this is a story that Paul Joseph Watson wrote about in April of 2012, InfoWars pointed out that there were a lot of very troubling things in that legislation. They were putting in powers for the IRS to stop you by accusing you of owing them money. But also in that document, back in the MAP 21, it makes the connection between funding and mandatory black boxes, which would be mandatory for all cars by 2015. So this is something that they've known about for quite a while, but notice the deception. They were telling everyone that this was simply about collecting a couple of seconds before and after you had a crash. That's for the insurance companies. Now they're admitting, with the articles that came out this weekend, the LA Times and elsewhere, they're admitting that they're storing all of that data. It's kind of like the prevarication about metadata versus collecting all of your other data. 
This is the way the government rolls this stuff out. This is the way they lie to people about it. Map 21 is Agenda 21 for our transportation and our ability to move around. And also notice that at the top of this are the insurance companies. They're the big partners. They're the big thing driving this, this kind of corporate fascism with the insurance companies at the very top. The LA Times pointed out something that I find very troubling an alliance between what they call libertarians and environmentalists on this new tax going through black boxes. And here's a quote from Adrian Moore, vice president of policy at Reason. He said, this is not just a tax going into a black hole. People are paying more directly into what they're getting. Well, actually, he ought to, of all people ought to know that government is a black hole, especially Washington. But it's not just allocating it to what people are using. As I mentioned before, this is taking away the anonymity of a sales tax, of a gas tax that you would pay into what you're actually using. And it's also penalizing people who have taken it on themselves to get fuel efficient cars. And the environmentalists of all people should understand that. So now they're gonna be penalized. They went out, they bought these fuel efficient cars. Now they're gonna be charged not on the fuel that they use, but they're gonna be charged on the miles that they drive. Why? So we can know everything about everybody and exert full control and raise taxes at the same time. But it's also disappointing to see that environmentalists have thrown in their lot with Obama on the nuclear power industry, especially concerning when we look at what's been going on at Fukushima for the last two and a half years. The update to that story today, Washington's blog, we carry that on InfoWars, uh, Fukushima is here. And they point out that only about 5% of the directly discharged radiation was deposited within a radius of 80 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. The rest was distributed over the Pacific Ocean. And they point out that last year, in some scientific studies from NOAA and from GEOMAR, they saw that over the next six to nine years, we're going to see concentrations on the west coast of North America that are 10 times higher than those in Japan. And that's assuming that even at the levels that we see now, that's very troubling. It's also assuming that we're not gonna have any more problems with Fukushima, and there are about 85 times the amount of radiation still to be released there if it's a catastrophic accident, as we saw with Hiroshima and other major nuclear incidents from a nuclear bomb. So these concerns about nuclear power plants are very great, and yet we see Obama and other environmentalist groups saying that, that nuclear power is more green than any other form of energy we have, even ridiculously saying it's more green than photovoltaics. Now stay around right after the break, we're gonna be back and we're going to have some information about what you can do to take care of your health with these kinds of dangerous threats. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salads, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate, 
Sports. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888 253 3139. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and as you know, I created what is now the third largest natural health website in the world, Natural Society. And on my quest to find the absolute best in natural health, I reviewed hundreds of different products, interviewed different formulators and doctors and medical experts. And when I discovered Dr. Edward Group, who is with me today in the InfoWars studio right now, I was amazed at what he had to offer and the formulations he was doing, completely free of GMOs, completely free of contaminants. So when I started teaming up with Alex, Alex Jones of InfoWars.com through my website StoryLeak, we discovered that that also coincided with his research. He was looking for about two years on the best things to give his family especially as children, and we found Dr. Edward Group, and he was developing this new form of nascent iodine, double strength, better than any competitor, just absolutely free of contaminants and the best on the market. And I said, what we should do is we should promote this because this is a great product. And he agreed, he looked into it extensively before he would even consider it. And now we're actually offering it through the new line InfoWars Health. And I'm here with Dr. Group because we're going to talk about iodine, why you need it. It's an excellent preparedness source, and it's also great to take before disaster strikes. But Dr. Group, thanks for joining us today and talk a little bit about nascent iodine, why it's the best, and you know, give us some background on yourself as well. Well, thanks for having me on, Anthony. It's always good to be in the InfoWars studio and being able to reach millions of people out there and being able to help millions of people because... Iodine is something that every single person, every single family should have a lot of stocked up in their medicine cabinet. With, recently with Fukushima, we're starting to see radiation levels in water. We're starting to see massive thyroid problems across the world. I mean, iodine is an essential mineral that is pretty much been lost and not talked about in the medical community at all. But I mean, it has major roles to play and I highly recommend everybody takes iodine on a regular basis. Uh, my company is Global Healing Center, and it's been our mission to provide the highest quality, which is GMO-free, certified organic, vegan, no animal testing, searching the globe, and then creating the highest quality supplements available. I mean, even to the point where we use borosilicate glass in our production, as opposed to everybody else out there that uses stainless steel. But back to iodine, I mean, iodine is extremely effective and there's a lot of different types of iodine out there. There's potassium iodide, there's iodates out there, and there's standard alcohol tinctures of just iodine. What we've done is we've actually created what's called a detoxified iodine or a nascent iodine. Now that means it's in an atomic form and the body doesn't have to break it down and it goes directly into the thyroid gland and the thyroid regulates your metabolism, regulates your sleep patterns, regulates your hormones, and with having iodine in the thyroid, the thyroid will not be damaged when you take in radioisotopes of iodine-131, which is the radioactive form of iodine. Now, the difference between most iodine supplements out there and the survival shield is that it's, it's an atomic form, which means it has one bond, a monatomic bond, instead of a diatomic bond of, I of iodine. Yeah, exactly. And what's key, too, is nascent iodine is the purest form. It's the strongest form. It's the most bioavailable form. But more importantly is the fact that some of these products contain GMOs, contain contaminants, contain USDA slaughterhouse glycerin, as you can expand upon. And that was my thing when looking for this, because I knew, number one, nascent iodine was the best. I knew that. There was no question about that. The doctors that I talked to and the researchers. And then the number of thing with me and Alex was, okay, we know that, but we need to find something that's free of everything that we are against. Everything the medical establishment pushes on us, like the GMOs, like the USDA slaughterhouse glycerin. So talk about the additives that are on average in the nascent iodine supplements that we have eliminated entirely. Well, most supplements out there that contain iodine are bonded to a salt, which is either going to be potassium iodide or sodium iodide, which is what you find in table salt, although they don't, only about one-fifth 
of the table salt these days is iodized, and that's another reason why there's such a deficiency in iodine. But they use alcohol. I mean, and the body reacts negatively towards alcohol, and it's something that you shouldn't be putting in. You know, all the people that are non-alcoholic don't have another option. What we use is we use a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base, which is extremely good at bonding to the iodine and delivering the iodine into your system at a very fast rate. So what, what that can ensure everybody is that they have a safe, effective iodine supplement that they can use on a regular basis and they can do what's called iodine loading in case there is high levels of radiation in the air. What's happening is these clouds of radiation from Fukushima are actually coming across the Pacific. Not only is the water in the Pacific Ocean extremely contaminated, but the air, and when it rains, it rains down these, you know, highly radioactive substances, not only iodine-131, but cesium-137 and strontium and other forms. So the iodine, if you don't have enough iodine in your body and in your thyroid gland, then the thyroid will pick up the radiotrophic iodine, which is the 131, and it will start destroying and splitting your DNA and start destroying your thyroid. And as a matter of fact, our medical profession actually gives people iodine-131 to destroy their thyroid gland and destroy the production of T3 and T4, which are the thyroid hormones for hyperactive thyroid or hyperthyroid uh, syndrome. So, I mean, we should be looking at how we can repair the thyroid, not how we can kill the thyroid. The bottom line is that with this nascent iodine, with this survival shield at InfoWarsLife.com, you can start preparing yourself now. Because with this nascent iodine, you can take it today and on a daily basis to prepare yourself and your family for any form of disaster, as opposed to taking an emergency chemical type of iodine that is actually toxic and dangerous to your body. So you can start preparing now. And it's, not, it's, it's smart to not wait until a disaster strikes. The background radiation over the past 60 years has dramatically increased. We're looking at incidents like now Fukushima just exacerbating this effect, and they've almost doubled, or more than doubled, if you look at certain data, over the last 60 years. It's essential to start protecting your family now before it's too late, and we're already facing radiation threats. So go to InfoWarsLife.com and start looking at Survival Shield. Pick it up now because realistically, honestly, we've seen it before in the past, there's a run on iodine right now. If Fukushima blows up and it looks like there's numerous weather events going towards it, there will not be any left. Start preparing yourself now before it is too late and get your hands on some for your family. And one other thing is the nascent iodine is safe for children and even mothers that are breastfeeding. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Dr. Group. Thanks for having me on. Well, that's it for tonight's news, but if you're a Prison Planet subscriber, stay tuned. After the news, we're going to have a video of a Walmart security guard that's actually going way over the top on a power trip, as well as one week after the open carry rally at the Alamo, we still have police in Austin falsely arresting people. Stay tuned. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. We're not allowed on Walmart property. It's not just this Walmart, it's all Walmart. Ban is lifetime. People will tell you that APD only trespasses you for a year. We reinstate every year. If we see you in the store, if we get you on camera, you get arrested. Class B misdemeanor. Yes, your information is going to go in our system. And anybody, all the Fortune 500 companies, everybody, anywhere you try to get a job, is going to see that you were trespassed from Walmart. Which means you will never get security clearance anywhere at any job. Don't come back. I won't be back there, I promise. I hope not. I need his information. Why does he get my information? It's standard for some. Okay. So I come out of Walmart, and I don't know what time it is, but uh, I sat in line for 20 minutes, and I'm sitting here waiting. Uh, I bought the fan, and I come out, and somebody tried to, sh uh, they asked me for mercy, and I said, no, I'm in a hurry, sorry. I walked out, and some dude stopped me and said, 
I'm calling the cops on you for not showing me your receipt. Um, he's, you know, he threatened me saying that, you know, you're going to get trespassing filed against you. If you ever want a job in security or anything, it's going to be on your record. I did nothing wrong. I'm in a hurry. I was trying to get back home with my fan. I don't feel like it's my right to show him the receipt after I sat in line and paid and purchased the merchandise with my credit card, uh, walked outside. Um, I called the cop. He said he called the cops. So I called the cops as well. I'm sitting here waiting right now. Um, I was insulted. It, it was it was pretty. I've never been treated like this for just purchasing an item at a store, and uh, you know, giving a place my business. I should have known better. It is Walmart. It's, it's right around the corner from my house, though. Um, yeah, just really ridiculous. Um, I'm just gonna sit here and wait for the cops. I'm kind of lost for words. Don't know really what to say right now. So. I'm staying and waiting for the cops because I don't want him to say or accuse of me trying to run or do anything like that. I just wasn't going to show him my receipt. Um, and I asked him if he accused me, if he was accusing me of stealing, he said no. And then I said, well, can I leave? And he said, well, I, they know who you are. I rent, they have your plate number and they'll file trespassing charges against you. So I'm really confused and, you know, I, I don't know what's going on here. So, um... I'm just gonna wait for the cops. This guy on the camera is the guy that stopped me, by the way. He showed a badge for like two seconds and then was called me an idiot and, you know, I don't know. It's pretty ridiculous to tell you the truth. So you need no, to go I, by the way. He, this he is has a clear room. room. You have he has clear room right here. 
So we want to have to arrest. Maybe we have to arrest. For what? what? Under what violation? Sir, you stand in front of the vehicle. I'm not standing anywhere, sir. I have a freaking bad ankle. Do I need EMS? Do I need EMS? Probably. But I might charge, I charge you guys for freaking assault. Your guy in the blue shirt. They're about to arrest us. Oh, you're, step, you're stepping on me, sir. You're pushing me back. What's your name, sir? It's a replica pistol. It's this guy just assaulted me. He pushed me back. Step pushing the press. What's his name? Pushing the press. What's your name, sir? I think I got I'm that. asking you what is your name. Film. Okay. You yeah. need it. Tough guy. I was too. The guy stepped on my foot. Answer the question. Where are you getting the authority? Your heroes and antiques are not firearms. They are not handguns. Who assaulted you? A deputy Cruz assaulted me. He was throwing somebody around and threw somebody in my jaw. You're taking that fire. I guess who I just met. Ladies and gentlemen, what you just witnessed is the police state. Two citizens were lawfully carrying pre-1899 revolvers. Under Texas Penal Code 46.01, any pre-1899 pistol or replica is not considered a firearm. Not considered a firearm. Texas DPS just arrested two people for not carrying a firearm. For lawfully carrying a firearm. So when they say they're not coming for your guns, you just saw it firsthand.